A gable roof is almost the simplest roof you can frame, aside from a shed roof, which is basically half a gable roof. The frame is a series of identical rafters spaced equally for the length of the house held together with sheathing. For a simple, regular gable roof, the rafters on the left side are identical to the rafters on the right. So it all boils down to laying out one rafter. The rafter is a hypotenuse of a right triangle. We can measure the run and the roof pitch is noted on the plans, but we need to figure out the rise and the rafter length. The Pythagorean theorem describes the relative lengths of a right triangle, and you can calculate that with a pencil and a scrap of OSB, but because we're paying you by the hour, you'd better use a construction calculator, which you can download on your phone. To lay out the common rafters, we'll need to know the building width, the width of the ridge, the overhang, and the roof pitch. If there were no ridge, the run would be half the width of the building from the center to the outside wall. In reality, you need to subtract half the width of whatever the ridge is from that measurement. So, after marking the center line, also mark each edge of the ridge. Hook the outside of the building with your tape and measure to that inside line of the ridge, and that's the run. 14, 11 and a quarter in this case. Pitch is shown on the plans and is indicated as a fraction, usually with 12 being the denominator. The first number is the rise, the second is the run. So a 612 pitch rises 6 inches for every 12 inches it runs. So how do you get from fresh lumber on the horses to a perfect fit on top of the walls? It begins with a calculator and then a saw. Punch in 14 and feet, 11 inch 1 quarter run, and then 6 inch pitch. Pressing diagonal gives us the rafter length, excluding the rafter tail. So 16 foot 8 and 7 16 inches is the length from the plumb cut to the plumb cut, from the ridge to the outside wall along the diagonal. Okay, that's the calculator part, now comes the saw part. In order to measure the rafter accurately, you'll need to make the plumb cut on the upper end so that you can hook your tape on it. So use the speed square to draw the correct angle, Rotate the square until the edge of the rafter lines up with the 6 on the common rafter scale and scribe that other edge. This speed square is one of the small ones that fit in your nail bags, but you can buy a bigger one for laying out wide rafters. Hook the long point and measure along the top of the rafter to 16 foot 8 and 7 16 inches and mark that plumb line. The rafter should sit on the full width of the wall, so square a line off the plumb cut that is 6 inches long, which is the width of the wall in this case, and that's the seat cut. These lines on your speed square are 90 degrees from the long edge. Collectively, this triangle notch is called the bird's mouth. So this is going to be an 8 inch overhang, but there's an inch and a half of subfascia, so mark 6 and a half inches past the plumb cut, and then make another plumb cut there. That's the length, overall length of the rafter, and then we'll want to square off the bottom of the rafter by where the soffit will be, so whatever the length of that subfascia is, square it off at the bottom of the subfascia and cut that. With those cuts made, you've got a perfect full-size rafter pattern for laying out all the rest of your rafters. Now, that can get heavy, so to make it easier, make a rafter jig with a leftover rip of subflooring and a one-by fence nailed along the edge. It's like a miniature rafter that you can use as a saw guide for the plumb cut, and you can also scribe the bird's mouth and soffit cuts. The fence stops just short of the plumb line so that you can line it up with the measurement along the top of the rafter, and that jig should make quick work of that big pile of rafters in front of you. Now how do you get them all up there? Well, that's the rough part. Mm -hmm.